um, let's say some few days, we'll be celebrating Easter. And Easter is all about love. Easter is all about giving. Easter is all about compassion. It's all about sacrifice, all about compromises. And I hope you've prepared your heart, body, and soul for this. Because if you're a Christian, Easter should mean a lot to you. Hello and welcome to The Standpoint. My name is Ahineri Geftianti. And today we do have a program for you. In fact, who is the woman? Is the woman the human being with the biological makeup or physical makeup that science or society describes as a woman? Is the female different from the woman? The woman and her identity is our topic for discussion today, and it is going to be very, very interesting. You don't want to miss any part of it. But before we go, let me say thank you to GTP for my club. In fact, GTP, this one is Adepa. You know they have Adepa Dumas. This is not Adipa Dumas. This is Adipa. Most of the time, it comes in the 12 yards, but you can also buy six, four yards, whatever it is, when you go to the market. So this is Adipa. And let me say thank you to GTP with, uh, in collaboration with the National Commission on Culture, the National Theatre, and the Cultural Society of Ghana, and indeed the government of Ghana, for finding it, deep to, uh, finding it fit to... Um, Consider me as one of the people who have promoted Made in Ghana wear. And so on the 30th of March, I was on it um, alongside the President of the Republic of Ghana, Mr. Alan Germante. You know, he was the uh, then Minister of Trade when the Made in Ghana um, idea was piloted and a few others. And I say thank you um, to them. And <laughs> this story will have to be told on another day. Because when I started wearing the Made in Ghana, the cloth and the beads on TV some 22 plus years ago, and they used to laugh at me, you know. And today, today, I've been on it for doing the same thing. Well, I want to tell you, my dear one out there, if you decide to put your mind to do something, if you decide to set up or have a goal or and back on a journey, a journey in court, close your mind to what anybody says. If you believe in it, if you trust yourself, if your conscience is clear, if you are passionate about it, keep on going. It may not take 22 years like it did mine, but then one day, one day the whole world will know and they will come following you and they will come applauding you for what you do. Because yes, sometimes we do what the Romans do when we go to Rome. But sometimes when you get to Rome, you let the Romans learn from you and do it the way you want to do it. But anyway, let me say thank you again to Papa Cosmetics who gave me the makeup products made in Ghana. Yes, it's a Ghanaian business. Beautifully applied by Nax Beauty Studio, a Ghanaian young lady. My hair, Afro by Chriselle, also a Ghanaian. And let me say thank you to the one who gives me the shoes. Ayer's Boutique Online. Aya is a Ghanaian. So promoting Ghanaian businesses as well. What is your business out there? You are Ghanaian. Come and support the standpoint. Come and sponsor it so that we stay on air, okay? Well, we take a break. When we come back, the woman and her identity. We'll be back. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing, or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality gold oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance, and makes your vehicle fuel pumped. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with gold synthetic oil. Well, you're a champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always choose Goel. Ashini Pankasa. Goel, good energy. New at Depa Dumas from GTP. The name we know and trust. 
premium quality fabrics with a smoother feel, new designs and richer colors. New at Depadumas for the woman who knows her worth. GTP quality fabrics printed in Ghana. GTP timeless. But okay, today I'll behave because I have my traditional mothers in the studio, so I'll behave. I'll be a very, you know, iraba, you know, mm. my in laws. So I have with me in the studio, in the audience today, I have members of the Latte and Cobia Old Girls Association. <laughs> And the group is led by my own in-law and mother, traditional mother, Nana Abina Ansa Sasreku the first. And Kobia. <laughs> and Kobia Hema Kwem Latte. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Okay. Now, today, if you just tuned in, we are going to find out who is a woman and what's her, her identity. Because society has described womanhood in so many ways. So that certain people who are considered female, when they don't have it, they think they are not women or they are not women enough. In fact, there are some areas where when you don't have those things or those qualities or descriptions that society gives you, they say, you are not a woman. You are a man. Na sa be me ya wako fana bet ne fi so. No u wa u ye sho so ba na u wa nu wa be ma. So who is a woman and what's her identity is our topic for discussion today. And let me say thank you to GTP for sponsoring us. Yes, apart from giving me the clothes, the cloth for sewing the dress, they also sponsor me. So I say thank you so much to GTP. Go ahead, ya ye dear. I win a pan kasa. Homegrown business. Let's patronize made in Ghana products and businesses. And that's the only way we can develop as a nation. So thank you so much. Thank you to Ophelia Crossland for making my dress for me. So the woman, who is she and what's her identity? And I have two amazing people in the studio with me. At my stream left, I have Juliana Amma Blofia. She is the founder and Executive Director of Girls Executive Movement. Is she a woman? How come she's actually leading young ladies? Is she sure she's a woman? Welcome back to the standpoint, Emma. Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. The bird in flight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, those who watch the standpoint, I'm sure you remember her. But we'll do a follow-up to that story sometime soon. And seated right next to me is my sister, my big, my advisor, my guardian, my, you know, I salute. When she calls, I need to check myself first and see, okay, then am I here. <laughs> <laughs> we could affectionately call her auntie, yeah, but she's, yeah, Pepra Amekuji. Hey, today, yeah, 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 my nephew. Hmm. She's, yeah, Pepra Ajimai Amekuji. But... Her husband is my uncle, my one and only sweet uncle, Danny. Head, she's the head um, of Coco Life Program. And um, she's been on the standpoint many, many times. She's been a blessing to us. And we say thank you so much for your contribution to the standpoint. And womanhood. You are a woman. Mm. Auntie, are you sure you are a woman? Ba, ba, ba. Oh, yeah, ba. Ba. So who is a woman? As far as I'm concerned, mm. a woman is a human being that is female, mm. full stop. So uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether she is, uh, how, do, how should I put it, whether she has, she has the shape that we are all used to, whether she, uh, when I'm talking about shape, whether she has breasts, whether she has butts whatever, or whether she's been able to have children, whether she can cook, whether, whether she can wash, whether she can, uh, she's married, 
She is a human being that is female. That is a woman. Mm. Yes. Ama, do you agree? Yes, I agree. To add to what Antia has said, I also agree that a woman, first of all, is a, is, is a human being. But I wanted to take it from a spiritual angle mm -hmm. where the Bible made it clear that we are spiritual beings having a, a, a human experience just like Jesus Christ did. And along the line, any time society tries to differentiate, it never, this, it never, it was never successful in differentiating between our spiritual, our spirituality, meaning that spiritually, we are equal and same. So I want to say that the woman, first of all, is a spiritual being mm. and a human being. These two never change mm. till we die. From the day we are born till we die, these two never change. Whatever happens to you, whatever you take on along the line, you still remain a human being and a spiritual being. Mm. All other identities we take on, they are transient, they change, they are dynamic along the line. But they are not the core of who we are as women. You know, in Genesis, it talks about, in the beginning, he created male and female. And then when you read down, it talks about the, he creating, you know, a being from the rib of the Adam. And then it was Adam who referred to that being as woman. So the creator himself did not even refer to us as woman. So the name woman does not really describe us as human beings. Do you agree to that? Well, um, God created, I would say that God created Adam mm -hmm. in his image. The same way as God created woman in his mm -hmm. image. But though God named all the animals and named Adam himself, it was Adam that referred to woman as woman. I believe that once you are created in the image of God, you speak the word of God as right. well. So there isn't really anything more than, I mean, to read into Adam referring to the woman as woman. Because that is why people want us to believe that a woman's being, her identity, exactly. should come from her husband. Mm. So if, for example, you are called Ya Pepra Ajman, mm. and then you marry, your husband should have the leeway to even rename you, maybe Makafui uh, Abekuji, yeah. and you lose your identity. what you came into, which is not mm. correct. And the same way, we shouldn't also believe that just because I'm married and I'm taking on my husband's surname mm. means that I'm less of a woman, I'm less of a woman mm. that I'm beginning, I'm, I'm reinforcing what Adam did, mm. that you take on the husband's name. There are women who are married and do not bear their husband's names. So it doesn't really matter for me i mean so long as you maintain your identity mm. that you understand who you are so when we talk about identity Emma, what are we talking about identity you know so it's somebody's identity what does it mean is it the character is it the attitude what is it what is identity okay identity is where the sum total of people's experiences hopes aspirations and culture and everything that they use to defi define themselves. So I would say my identity is what I present myself to be. It's what I define myself as. So I can have my personal identity and I can belong to, a, I can have a group identity. Personal identity will be what Ama Klofia defines herself to be. And then group identity will be what maybe my family background says we are, what my religion says we are, what my, na my nation says we are. So we have different types of identity, but they all come together mm -hmm. as one as to who do you define yourself to be? How what do you the define way you are yourself? Socialized, the way you are raised, does it influence your identity, your individual identity? It does. Does it influence that? It does. It does. Because in, in our bringing, 
Society has a way of saying that's the group, the group identity. It tells you, okay, you are an individual, but you belong to this group. And this group, we, we identify ourselves as this. And these are the rules to follow to be able to be properly identified as this, a member of this group. Mm. So once you grow from that side, you, you, you try to belong to the group. You don't want to be the outcast of the group. So you try to bear the group identity. Mm. So in that process, everything that is laid down as a rule to maintain your identity as a member of that group, you follow it. Mm. So those becomes the imbibed program things principles that we grow with and that's how sometimes you hear the adults say this is how we do it in our family right. they are trying to reinforce the identity rules that sometimes you grow and you try to break out from yeah but can that also influence your individual identity exactly it can because as you keep imbibing it, you grow and you get used to it but because i said earlier the identity is transient mm. so if you are conscious about it along the line you grow and then your preferences change. You discover new things. You question things you have already believed. And then you change. Along mm. the line where you change, you become, you refine your identity as you grow. Mm. But when you are not conscious about it, then you just grow. So you grow with the stated rules of the previous identity you were born into. Mm. And it becomes your personal identity. You grow and you also impart it to people. Mm. Does it differ from, let's say, society to society? We are Africans. We are Ghanaians. Um, Europeans and um, the Western people from the Western world. Would you say that their individual identities may differ from how we perceive or um, nurture our own individual identities as Africans, as Ghanaians? Zisaya? Well, uh, from what Ama is describing, definitely, once you are in a certain society, you, uh, you, your identity will be uh, more or less defined by the society you are growing in. Mm -hmm. Even in Ghana, um, I believe that if you are a Ghana, your identity will certainly be different from uh, someone, a female like you, who is a Fanti. Mm -hmm or who is uh, Dagumba. Because the thing is that our culture, the traditions that we grow in are different. Some of us have been uprooted, mm -hmm. and we've, we've, we've been more or less bred in Accra. So we have, uh, in, in, in deep in Accra, so you see that some of us have, uh, sometimes it becomes like conflicting identities yeah. because we are coming from a different set of traditions and then we are imbibing another set of traditions and then we marry into even a third set of traditions but it is up to you to grow and identify what is good for you and get that identity so once i have been born and bred in ghana my outlook on life will be different from somebody born and bred for example in norway but at a point in time, so long as uh, we are all learning from each other, you realize that we begin to question. And that's what I, I believe Amma was saying about uh, growing. Yeah. So you begin to grow. But in so doing, I mean, there are people who say that it's becoming a worrying trend because the younger generation, or especially of women coming up, are losing their true identity as Africans or as, as Ghanaians, forgetting that there's a wisdom in why God created us as Ghanaians, as Ewes, as Ashantis, as Fantis, as Aquemus, as Lattes. There's wisdom in that we are losing all that and following what we see, what we read, and are becoming that. Amma? The issue is that we agree that um, identity evolves. So when something positive is in another society that they describe themselves as, and we feel that it could help us, we go for it. But then it's not like you go for it and you throw yours away. That I agree with, with the, with the uh, assertion you made. Yeah. But the issue on the ground is that 
we still want to keep on the old identity. Even though the world has evolved, things have changed, and we also need to evolve if we really need to make an impact in that world. Mm -hmm. So let's say if the tradition is, uh, that identifies as me coming from a palace is that as a young lady, you're supposed to be seen and not heard. Mm. Growing up, do I still want to be seen and not heard? What impact has that given to me? Mm. What impact would that made, make on another person or even society as a whole? When Did your mother die when she was seen and not heard? No, she didn't die. Uh -huh. Yes, but I, I think that she went through a lot that she could have saved herself from going through if she had spoken out. That is one. Mm -hmm. I think that the community lost a lot that they could have gotten from her contributions if she had spoken out. Mm -hmm. I remember as a young girl, there were things that my father and his people were having, would be having a, a, um, a deliberation on, and my mother had the answer. And she would be telling the, me the answer on the side. And she would say, you watch them, they'll go on, they'll come and hit here. And truthfully, they will go and come and hit. So when I was growing up, one day I asked my dad, why is it that you don't add this woman to your panel? Mm -hmm. Because this woman seems to have the answers you are looking for. Mm -hmm. And then he explained that's why they always say they go to Abrewa. Abrewa. So when they go to the imaginary Abrewa, so it means that when it is imaginary, mm -hmm. it is okay for us to deviate from our culture mm -hmm. of having an all-male panel. Mm -hmm. But when it's physical, we say, hey, don't go because you are, you are, you are, you are jumping our tradition. So I think that my mother didn't die from that, but she suffered a lot and the community lost a lot. Let me take a break. These women are losing their woman identity. <laughs> Let me take a break when we come out, continue. This is very interesting. We'll come down to what society has made the woman to be and has managed to actually um, indoctrinate women to believe that with all these things, they are not, you know, women. Well, let me say thank you to Awake Purified Water, Ghana's fair charity driven um, mineral water. Thank you so much to them. And thank you to Royal Drinks by Casa Preco Company Limited. Go Got Yogurt is also homegrown business. You know, I'm for the standpoint, we are homegrown. So every support, everything we get, as homegrown business, and we do believe in that, and we do promote that. Well, we say thank you to Gogot Yogurt. As a woman, yogurt is very good for you. And if you need yogurt, you go for Gogot Yogurt. Simplicita, you know, you go for that. Thank you to Daddy Cool Pastries. Thank you to Cake Technique. Thank you to House of Foods, Yep Cleaning Services. They all support to make this program a success. We take a break when we come back. We'll continue this discussion. Water gives life. Water is life. Enjoy the pure, refreshing taste of awake, purified drinking water, which comes in a uniquely designed bottle with a lemon green tap. Water is your perfect way to stay hydrated. And remember, for every bottle you buy, an amount will be donated to the National Caveat Thoracic Center, Ghana. Awake Purified Drinking Water, one for life. For bulk purchase, contact 0262-351-251. I'm a beneficiary of the Girl in Need Foundation. Some time ago, there was no hope for me to go to school. But through the Girl in Need Foundation, I was able to complete my secondary education. I quite remember when we completed JHS, things became very, very tough. But with the help of God and the help of this foundation, which is the Girl in Need Child Foundation, now we are who we are today. And this foundation are really, has really, really helped me. So I'm pleading with you that you help with any amount you have. Please give something out. Donate at least one CD for a girl. It will change one one's life. Remember, your one city can touch a life out there, can make impact in the life of somebody.
welcome by the woman and her identity. Okay, we've defined identity. But once again, let me say thank you to Chriselle for my hair, my Afro hair today. You know, I look like the 50s. We just finished Ghana month, you know, so a uh, Gold Coast Day, Independence Day. Well, say thank you to GTP for my cloth. This is Adepa Easter. It's around the corner. Go buy some for your mother, okay? Or your wife or your auntie or your sister or even your father or your uncle. You know, Adepa comes in 12 years, so, you know, everybody can benefit from it. The whole family, you can buy it. It was fa. You are gone, you know. <laughs> Thank you to Ophelia Crossland Design for sewing for me. Make a product by Paba Cosmetics, supplied by Nax Beauty Studio, and my shoes by IS Studio Online. In the studio with me, yes, I've been talking to Juliana Amaklofia. She's the founder and executive director, Girls Excellence Movement. Okay, and then Ya Pepra Amekuji, head. Coco Life Program. She's a Coco Farmer. Bonseman, Bonseman, a Coco Farmer. A plastic Yawagana, how I call her now, any more. Of course, I know the Adrian, no could you know the year? Eh, but funny, sir. So, how many women know these kind of things we've described today to mean the identity of womanhood? Do we even understand that we are entitled to our? identity sister yeah. I would say that consciously we are aware of our identity but we bury that because we are also aware of the society that we are in mm. the society that we want to belong to so if society is telling you that as a woman you should be married and yet you don't want to be married. You want to conform so that society does not call you names. So every woman must be aware. And then we have children, daughters. We know that we want our daughters to aspire. But then uh, society says a girl can aspire, but her main aspiration should be married. And because we don't want anybody to tell us that, hey, you're sitting there, your daughter is not married. You, you got married. And you don't want your daughter to be married. We push our daughters yes. to marry. Yes. The same way our daughters are not having children. Maybe um, biologically they can't have children. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it is their choice mm -hmm. not to have children. But because society says if she's a woman, she should be able to have children. Then we push them or they push themselves. So it's like we are aware. Mm -hmm. But because of society's expectations, mm -hmm. we want to redefine our identity. You need to be married. You need to have children. You need to be... Do Hardly will society tell you that, oh, you need to be mm -hmm. president. Yeah. You need to be the top-notch lawyer. Yeah, you need, you to, need be to be. Engineer. You need to be an engineer. To Hardly. follow your dreams. It's school time. They are doing um, uh, career week we, for yeah. the Totofiwa, the yeah, small, the small children. Yeah. Career day, yeah. and all the boys are supposed to be doctors, doctors soldiers, mm -hmm. lawyers, yeah. engineers, etc. Mm -hmm. And the ladies are supposed to be teachers, yeah. nurses. Yes. So you don't understand. Why even at that point, mm -hmm. we want to redefine the identities of uh, girls mm -hmm. and let them grow into uh, that kind of identity that we have defined for them because they have to aspire to be mothers and wives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we even say that it doesn't matter. Somebody told me, um, I think about three years into my marriage, when she realized uh, no baby was coming out of the marriage, 25 years later, I don't know where she is. No baby has come. I wonder what she's thinking about me. But three years into the marriage, when no baby had come, she told me point blank. She said, look, nobody is going to meet you and say, yeah, how are you? How is your husband? Our society will say, yeah, how are you? How are your children? Where is she? I don't yeah, know. When I called, the first person I asked was my uncle Danny. Yes. <laughs> so, you see, so society is expecting that 
if I call myself a woman, I should have children. Even before I marry. Sometimes they tell you. Yeah. You go and have, if uh, no man is coming, just uh, go and I find. I want a kitchen. I want a kitchen. Thank you. You know, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Marriage doesn't delay. It's childbirth that, is, you know, delays. So, so these are the things that you are dealing with. And therefore, you forget your identity. Or you want to suppress your identity. But I tell you, every woman who has suppressed her identity is in pain, mm -hmm. is hurting. She knows that this is not what she wants to be. This is, she doesn't want people to define her. She wants to be able to define herself and have her identity. But she has to conform. And anybody who feels that I have to conform for the sake of maintaining the status quo is in pain. They will smile, but they are in pain. Ama, your group, what is your problem? Your generation, <laughs> your young people. What, what, what's up with you guys? I, I think you are confused. Because in one time, mm -hmm. you are buying the things to conform to what society describes as womanhood. So you are buying the breast, you are buying the buttocks, you are buying the hips. You are buying, what else do you buy? <laughs> the lips and, and things. And then in another breath, you, some of you two want to be size zero. <laughs> want to be tiny, mm -hmm. tiny waist, big, but, you know, kind of. So removing their ribs. Removing their ribs kind of, what, what is going on? What, 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 what's that all about? Is that also about <laughs> identity? Yes, in, in a way. It's, it's, it's a struggle to belong. So like we've been saying, society has identity jackets that a woman must wear. And it doesn't have only one. It has multiple. Mm. So you must wear all of them to be a whole woman. And if you lose one, it comes with repercussions that are, sometimes can go as far as verbal abuse or being mm. ostracized or being tagged. And it rewards you when you wear them. Mm. So the one who wears them so well and is good at multitasking in all of them mm. is, is rewarded with society's mindset. It's rewarded with a good marriage, children, and everything society has promised that if you wear this identity so well, we give you all this. If you lose one of these, we take out from who you are. Yeah. So when a girl hasn't gotten to a point where she says, okay, Yes, society has given me this jacket. I'm wearing all of them and I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. Why don't I go to the creator? Who does he say I am? If we don't get to that stage, then you have the, the girl or the woman struggling to keep up with this. Final. On that note, let me take a break. When we come back, we'll find out who are you as a woman? What is your identity? Married, single, children, no children, working, not working, broke, money, car, mm -hmm. no car, business, no business. What are you? Who are you? Mm -hmm. What is your identity? Well, once again, let me say thank you to GTP for sponsoring us. Goyal Ghana Oil Company Limited. Yeah, yeah, dear. Homegrown business. I'm in Pankasa. Thank you so much for your sponsorship. We take a break when we come back. Who are you? Really? And what is your identity? Irrespective of your circumstance. We'll be back. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing, or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality goil oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance, and makes your vehicle feel pampered. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with Goal Synthetic Oil. Goal is a champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always choose Goal. Ashini Pankasa. Goal, good energy. Stanford, we are supported by Royal Drinks, Awake Purified Water, and Gogot Yogurt. Cake Technique, House of Food, Daddy Cool Pastries, and of course, Yep Cleaning Services. They support us, and we are so grateful to them. Sister Ya. Mm -hmm. 
So how do you find the balance? How do you maintain your ideal? Because whether we like it or not, of course, when you're married, there's something that has to be uh, had to give. There's some compromises you have to make. There's some sacrifices you have to make. But then how do you keep your identity as a woman in marriage? Uh, they, they have told you that the two shall become one. But I like the fact that uh, when you see two mm -hmm. written, you know there's a, there's there's a, a symbol mm -hmm. that is division. Yeah. So you can always come and divide it yeah. and then multiply again and yeah. subtract again. So <laughs> you have to be a mathematician okay. in marriage that, look, I am Ya Pepra Amekuji. Mm -hmm. I am married to Daniel Amekuji, but mm. I am still Yapepra Amekuji. My husband and I can do things together, but I should be able to also do things on my own. But when doing things on my own, I shouldn't forget that I have a husband. How does it affect him? Yeah. The same way that I expect that, well, whatever my husband is doing, he will do it as Daniel Amekuji, not as husband of Yapepra Amekuji. Mm -hmm that uh, people say, oh, I saw your wife here. Mm -hmm. He will tell them that, yes, that's her job. That's her business. That's what she wants to do. That's her passion. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that whatever he's also doing, he will forget about me. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you balance all these things. Mm -hmm. um, I said it somewhere and somebody misconstrued it. I said, I thank God we don't have children. Mm -hmm. And somebody misconstrued it. If you have children, fine. Mm, yeah. If you don't have children, too, as far as I'm concerned. If you said, thank God we have children, somebody will still mis misconstrue it. Yes. Uh, in because, their society, you don't win. Exactly. Mm. Because I see the job that I do yeah. and the job that he does. And I say to myself, so if we had had children, how, were you going to how would we have managed this? Mm. And we, I believe that we are serving the country. And we are also serving humanity. And you're serving the number of children you are taking care of. And you are raising. Me. Sometimes yeah. I ask myself, so if God had given me two, it would have meant that it would have stopped me from <laughs> two all these two. thousands of children. <laughs> yeah. But then at least I can go home and there will be no children yeah. and I lock my door. Yeah. And yes, yeah. the children. Will. But you see, it's a matter of balancing. Yeah. And a matter of knowing yourself. What do I want? How do, I how do I identify myself or define myself as a woman? Or as even as the, a woman with a husband? Mm. I don't like the term wife. Mm. Because when we use the term wife, it's, it's, uh, because, uh, it's, it's only a four-letter word. Mm -hmm. Wonderful instrument for enjoyment, enjoyment by who? That's what I was told on my wedding day. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful instrument for enjoyment, for enjoyment by who? For the band. Yes. What if something happens? Look at the radio that we have in our homes. They are wonderful instruments for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. If it gets spoiled, don't we throw it away mm -hmm. and buy a new radio? So if you think of your wife like a radio or a, 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 a TV, a TV it means that as soon as something goes wrong, you throw her away mm. and bring in somebody. Or so, sometimes you don't throw her away. There's a new model. Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so you pack down. this one. So you pack this one, you go and buy it. You see, one. so that, that's the whole mentality. So mothers, I think it, it is up to us. As far as I'm concerned, it is not the sex that will keep the man. No. It is not the food that you cook that will keep the man no. or washing his things that will keep him. Mm. If he or the children, some mm. people say, oh, let's uh, make sure you have a child mm. to cement the marriage. And that's why some women go and steal people's mm -hmm. yeah. babies Maybe that babies. they have carried mm -hmm. for nine months and are lying in the hospitals. Yeah. So it's not all these things. It's when you want to stay, you as a woman yeah. or he as, as a, a man, man want, want to, stay. to stay in the marriage. Yeah. It is not all these things. Mm. So let us understand who we are as women. Be confident in ourselves as women. This is our identity. Mm. And then you use that identity. Life as for marriage is transactional as well. It can just <laughs> and, <laughs> unexpectedly. Yes. <laughs> the so, man can just walk to you one day and then tell you, uh, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, or, it, or I'm it's in love not with working. Somebody else. 
or it's not working. And the woman can do the same. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's done. gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whatever skills or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> Ama, yes, I want let me put you on the spot. Yes. The last time you were on the show, you were married. Where's your ring? I'm divorced. The last time I was on the show, you I was actually separated. You were separated? Yes. Are you a woman? Yes, I'm and a woman. Who, a woman to who, who, who divorces, is she a woman? Yes, she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> she's a woman because first of all, she was made in the image of God. So she remains a woman whether she's a professor or married or divorced. And she's a woman, second of all, because she's a human being. Mm. So whether she's married or not, she remains a human being. So okay. But you've been married not, before. Yes. You know, you, you, and there were children in there. Mm -hmm. How did you manage to keep your identity as a profession, your dreams, your goals and aspiration? Because, I mean, when we go back to where, like, on the standpoint, where you come back, how, you know, a village mm -hmm. girl... You, you got to Accra on the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. Didn't know many, anybody here. You've been a house help before. Now you are about to go and do your doctorate. The process you've been able to. And along the line, you got married. You said you've, I mean, it's like, you've done your national <laughs> service and you're still in the process. How did you manage to keep all that whilst you're still married? Okay, so within the marriage, when things started going outside what I expected or what I wanted it to be, I started a journey to find myself. Ah. So before the marriage, I thought I knew who I was. But then who I was was what society has defined me to be. Mm. So I got to a point in the marriage where I said, okay, now I have to define me for myself. So I started a journey I call, I, I always call it a spiritual journey. I wanted to find out who I was. What did God say I am? And once God said, I'm human and that's enough, I took that one and I was running with it. So that was what gave me the strength to break away from the other identities. So you started questioning yourself. Yes. Yeah, so when I, I went through that process, I discovered who I want. I defined myself now. Mm -hmm. And I defined it and I said, you know what, I'm a spiritual being, that's enough. I'm a human being made in the image of God. So if I have a big stomach, yeah. that's the image of God. So image of God is not defined by anyone. Now you are on the, on the, uh, the runway, I just, flying, yes, yes. a bird in flight. Yes. You are going so to I can be in a, a society and things could be happening. If it doesn't fall in line with what I had defined myself to be now, mm -hmm. it doesn't move me. But mm -hmm. when it falls in line, then I know that, oh, this is my identity. Then I flow with it. Mm -hmm. What, what would you say to somebody who says that it's because you try to find your identity, that's why your marriage ended? Oh, I was told that. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> On that note, let me move, you know. I try to provoke you. Apparently, you will not be provoked. <laughs> let me move to um, the audience and speak to Nana Abina and Sansa Sreko, the first. And um, she will tell me a bit about her group. That's a latte and cobia. Old Girls Association. Yo, thank you, Ohenere, for letting me introduce my group. Mm -hmm. We are from Latte Kubasi, okay. and we are Latte and Kobia Old Girls Association mm -hmm. from Akanchani. Okay. And Akanchani means in Akan, Akan language, or Ekwapim language, as a Akansere. We carry gold. We, we, we sell gold those times. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we call Akan Chani. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why I mm -hmm. uh, make or uh, make this group, yes, is because uh, in our society, those times, ladies or women don't go to palace. Okay. Only men goes. And the women will be sitting down like um, Auntie mm -hmm. Amma says, yes. yes. We are not going, we are not moving, we will stick at one place. That makes me or push me to organize this group so that our women can come out mm. and help the society. Okay. That's our aim. Oh. And secondly, I used to help them. Okay. Those, those um, among them don't have nothing doing, always be there, even to feed their children, grandchildren is okay. a, a bit problem. Okay. Yeah, that's why okay. I used to... Okay, what, what's the meaning the, of Ancobia? Ancobia, we don't go anywhere. We okay. are chief advisor. Secondly, you sit at home uh, when our kids are away. 
Yeah. We sit at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. You okay. always at home. Yeah. That's why that's I move from say, that's it. Okay. That's why I move from Tema Community Eleven mm -hmm. to stay at Latte. Latte. Okay. So I'm now an, at Latte. Yes. Yeah, yeah, see, it, and easy it, lies ahead. It, it, it's not easy because me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not easy because me here yeah, medical so pretended to was salt pond. Okay. But because my title, I have to sit back and take care of everything, right. everything, right. motherly children, whatever. I have to take care of everything. Yeah, but it doesn't yes. stop you from achieving your dreams. No, so. I'm a nurse. Okay. But now I've turned into a carer. Okay. So I do take care of Why aged. Okay. Aged. Okay. <laughs> I do take care of aged and recently I opened daycare center which which is called uh, Nyamema Daycare Center. Okay. So that's what I also do. Also in Latte. Yes, okay. Latte. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for Welcome. you know coming. That's the traditional angle to it, you know. And from what you know, and Kobia Hima has said, and um, it's something that I always tell people. Sometimes people find out how come you know that when I was going to marry a chief, like oh your dreams and everything. I say like wherever you find yourself, you can achieve your dream. Mm -hmm. It's like working with what you have. Mm -hmm. You know, she's an Kobiahima. Now she has to be at the back, I mean, in Latte, not background. But while she's at Latte, she's also doing, today she's moved her group from Latte to come to the standpoint, to be a part of it, to also to listen, to learn, and to be part of, to tell their story to the world. So in our struggle, sometimes we think that being moved from point A to B makes you lose your identity. Being married should not make you lose your identity. Being single should not make you. Being divorced, having children, not having children, having a job should not. Anyway, it's not my part. Conclusion, Amma, then I'll come to. Okay. In conclusion, I want to tell the woman out there yes. that mm -hmm. you are a human being and that's enough. Mm -hmm. When you lose that marriage, when you lose that doctorate certificate or you lose that big job, who are you? A human being. So that should be the foundation upon which you wear every other identity you take on along the line. And know the balance, when to work which identity. So if you are a professional and your professional identity is being discussed, handle that professionally. If you are a mother and it's being discussed, your, profession, your identity as a mother is being discussed, discuss that fully. If you are a lady or a young lady and your student's situation as, an, as a, your identity as a student is being discussed, so let's not mix it up. The mixture is what causes the crisis. Mm. When we know how to demarcate it and live within each role at the time that it is appropriate, then mm. there will be no identity crisis. So thank you. You are a woman and that's enough. You are a woman and that's enough. Sister, yeah. I'll, just, I'll add that, in fact, we need to be able to be confident in ourselves and not change who we are as women. You have, when I say not change, I don't, I'm not talking about physical changes. Change, yeah. I'm talking about who we are as spiritual beings, mm -hmm. as beings that were created in the image of God. Mm. So let us know who we are. Be confident. We shouldn't say that, oh, me de, me ba, e, nya, me ama, me ba. Or, ma. Mm. God did not yes. uh, give me children. Mm. Or, God did not give me marriage. Mm. So, I am not a woman. I don't even have breasts. Mm. I don't even have hips. Mm. Uh, look at my face. Mm. You are a woman. Do what you can do with whatever you have. And don't subject yourself, or don't suppress yourself. Uh, or the, the modern girls, uh, mm. that thing you say, do you. Yeah, Continue yeah. doing you. Doing you. Whatever it means. <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> Just be you. Take care of you. So first of all, let's take care of ourselves. To be able to take care of anybody we choose to. And the word is choose. Mm. Choose who you want to take care of. Mm. Don't let anybody force anybody on you that this one you have to take care of. Though I will choose to take care of you. And mm. take care of, so you take care of me. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has really been enlightening and this has been very revealing. I'm sure we'll do um, 
a part two. In June, we actually dedicate the, the month to men. So men, don't worry. We'll do a program on the man and his identity. Mm. You also have the crisis song. Mm. We'll be back with a bit of me. Huh. You're surprised, right? Yes. I'm sitting on the floor. By the way, what is my name? Does the fact that I'm sitting on the floor change my name? Or who I am? Or what I do? Or how I got to where I am today? And why I am where I am? Does it? You see, in life, there comes a time when you have to literally be on the floor. You hit rock bottom. Circumstances can make you get there. So many things can happen that way. It doesn't matter how tall you stand. It doesn't matter the heels you're standing. It doesn't matter your social, whatever status you think you have in society. There may come a time when you'll be here. But when you are here, my dear woman, remember, it doesn't change who you are. It doesn't make you any less a woman. It doesn't change the fact that you were born on such a day, that you have achieved this much, that you went to school, that you have this dream, that you have this aspiration, that this is where you want to go. The you, your identity, your true identity doesn't change irrespective of what life deals with you, the kind of card that life deals with you or offers you. Your true identity doesn't change. I sit on the floor. I am Ohine Yuri Gifty Auntie. If you take it Ohine Yuri, I am still Gifty Auntie. That name, nobody can take it away from me. No. My father gave it to me. I was born on Friday. No one can change that. I went to school. I worked here. I did. Nobody can change those things. So woman, never, never compromise on your identity. Who you truly are. Make sacrifices. Yes, I mean, in certain way, make some shift here and there. But truly who you are, deep inside you, let nothing change it. Not circumstances. Not what people say or not what people do to you. It is a journey. It is called life. There will come a time when you will learn to stand again. You put yourself together. And you stand again. Sometimes you can stand on your own. Without holding on to anything. Sometimes you have to hold on to something to stand. Other times, someone will have to hold your hand to stand. Never be afraid to ask for help. We are adding too much pressure. We are putting too much pressure on ourselves. Because of circumstances. Please. Never lose your identity, no matter what. I pray to God that we always remember who we truly are. Who we are in God. Who we are as women. Who we are as Ghanaians. Who we are as mothers. Who we are, simplicity, as human beings. So that nothing, nothing will break us. As for me, whether shoes or no shoes, sitting on the floor or standing, wearing heels or not, I remain a woman with super crazy faith in God. I know God has got me covered, but I also know that he's given me wisdom to try and find who I truly am and to maintain my identity. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Remember next week, it is Easter. And our topic for discussion, women at the cross. Bye for now.